I mean, this has been going on for decades, but the idea of privatizing more and more of the municipal functions. The governor of Michigan wanted to separate the water systems. They had to do it on an interim basis through uh, getting different water that needed a different type of treatment. That type of treatment ended up corroding the pipes in a way that they couldn't anticipate, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Chicago, maybe 15, 20 years ago, sold off its parking meters and lost control of that revenue. And also the ability to sort of say like, hey, you know what? We might want a, a pedestrian area here. Um, there are plenty of examples of this. And to the extent that we should have any policy work regarding uh, these public services, we should be um, essentially making more of these uh, enterprises public, not less. And there is a... <clears throat> There is a push in Pennsylvania to um, to incentivizing the um, private companies to buy publicly owned water uh, systems. And uh, here is some testimony. This is from uh, Tony Bellito. He's the executive director of the North Penn Water Authority, who speaks out uh, against the privatization of water. Uh, of water and um, some of these stories are just nuts. The reason that the private companies charge so much higher than municipal systems is threefold. There are three explicit reasons as to why their prices are so much higher. First, it's because their costs are spread over a wide for a w very wide customer base. So customers living in one geographic region have to contribute to paying for infrastructure improvements in other distant areas in which they receive no benefit. They call that economies of scale, but that's just a nice term for meaning that we have to pay for a system uh, that we don't get any benefit from. Second, it's because the for-profit business model requires that the company pay a dividend to their shareholders. Municipal authorities have no such obligation. And third, they pay exorbitantly high salaries, bonuses, and stock options to their upper management when compared to the more modest financial compensation received by employees of publicly owned system in the order of millions of dollars. Someone has to pay for that. Act 12 has been called a fair market value. There's nothing fair about it. It's actually predatory pricing. It's an odd situation where both the buyer and the seller have an incentive for the price to be as high as possible because they're going to get that back uh, in full with interest as well. We talk about what is the appraised value of a system that is on the market to be purchased, and we hire and they hire consultants to decide what's the value. And we talk about depreciation. They're not buying the pumps and the pipes and the treatment plants. They're not interested in that. What they're buying is the customers, which is a long-term, forever revenue stream. So to argue about whether a, a pump is worth what or whatever it's been depreciated. It's the, it's, the, it's the continuous stream of customers that they're actually purchasing. That has the value. One way to put it is they're purchasing not the eggs, but the goose that lays the golden egg. They're, they're purchasing that customer base. That's what they're buying. So in conclusion, we regard the fact that uh, Act 12 should be modified by adding a voter referendum so that the rate paying customers have the opportunity to voice whether or not they're in favor of privatization. And number two, the scope should be, should be addressed to deal with only distressed systems, which are financially troubled and which are operational de operationally deficient. And those are, are, are criteria that can actually be uh, quantified. And lastly, I would state that people should see privatization for what, for what it really is, which is a scam. It is a loan disguised as a gift, wrapped up with empty promises that must be paid back with interest through exorbitant rate increases, resulting in no better service to the <coughs> customers, while the private company's upper management and investors fill their own pockets with obscene amounts of profits, and they laugh all the way to the bank. And the, you know, the reason why a municipality or uh, you know, a state would allow for privatization of these things is, is twofold. One is it gives a one-time boost in revenue that some of these politicians may not be here in five or six years when you got to pay the, pri uh, the piper. And if they are, it's the fault of the private uh, entity, not them, that the rates are going up. And the other is, of course, that there's a tremendous amount of money lobbying these uh, state senators because 
like the guy has explained, you're getting a you're 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 getting a sort of like a monopolistic control of a revenue stream for years and years to go. I mean, you could actually you can even sell off. You can securitize that because it's so like everybody's going to need water. And we can look at the actuarial tables and tell you how many uh, people it is. And we don't have any control on it. No one's putting any brakes on our, our rate increases. Where are you going to go? You're not going to dig your own well in a, uh, in a city. And even in a small town, if you're living in a small, you know, you, you're not, you, this is it. You're going to get this water or you're not. This is um, uh, Pennsylvania State Rep uh, Joe Teresi. Uh, speaking against, this is at the Pennsylvania State Assembly uh, Consumer Protection Committee here. He's say, hearing is that talking about um, uh, the implications of privatizing these water, water systems. Your product is free, unlike a lot of other companies. Um, but the challenge that we have today is when I have a senior citizen call me and tell me she's peeing in the backyard because her water bill and her sewer bill doubled, and no one cared about that. Your return on investment in three years. Show me somewhere else you go for return on investment in three years. Somebody buys a business and says, we got to get all our money back in three years, and does it on the back of the consumer. That's where the issue lies right now, is that my water bill, my sewer bill doubled. Nothing got better at my house. Nothing changed what I had. So we're here to look out for the consumers that we represent. And I think that it is on also the PUC to understand that it's very easy to say, well, that's what the municipality said and we need to agree to this. But then to think about the consumers, those senior citizens who pay more for water and sewer right now than they do taxes in their community just for the service of being able to go to the bathroom. There's a Broadway show called You're in Town that I'm going to ask you all to refer to that charged you to use the bathroom and to use the water. And that's exactly where we've gone, where people have had to make a decision whether I'm going to flush my toilet or I'm going to go out and buy food. And I think that it's the obligation of everyone here, and the two people from the municipalities, I'm with you 100%. I wish my area would have done this, but I'm not here to take on the companies and the quality of what you put out, because I think you do put out a great product at the end of the day, which is given by God, and you get it to the home and, and make sure it's pure. What I'm here to say is, when does profit, is it enough? When is it enough that we're going to tax people or charge them too much for an essential thing that every one of us has to have? And I would ask you all this, including the PUC, to take this under consideration when you buy these authorities, that maybe it's a seven to eight year profitability, not a three. Maybe it's a lower rate that our CEOs, and it's not the CEOs, but our stock up, you know, people own the stock and our employees are not making numbers in the millions to get an essential product that keeps us alive to each homeowner. Maybe it's an obligation that we need to think about. I can't sit here and say that I'm happy what happened in Limerick. It wasn't your decision. It was the council's decision to sell the authority, which I still will ride them about. I, I think it was a little bit of a greed um, that happened in our community. But I also think there's a moral issue that's happening. And when I have a senior citizen tell me that they're going, and literally she said that, a woman called me and said, I'm peeing in my backyard rather than to flush my toilet because I can't afford the sewer bill any longer and I can't afford to eat. So I'm sorry to be so blunt, but I think it needs to be said as we move forward and look at these laws, how we deal with this in the future. Thank you. You know, the, uh, the guy's so close. But the problem is um, his constituents are not consumers. They're citizens. And uh, he's spot on. Everybody needs this service. And the idea that you're going to tell these private companies, don't be so greedy that you need all of your investment back in three years. Make it seven or eight. Control the compensation. You're a lawmaker. You don't need to be in a position to ask politely for a corporation not to gouge your constituents. You're so close to understanding that this is, my constituents should not be consumers for basic necessities. They're citizens. This should not be a commodity. Just imagine that. Like, I'm a consumer of uh, sewer services. It's just ludicrous. Like, like, you're comparing, like, phones or something like that. Right. And first off, like, you know, there's no, obviously, there's no marketplace here. Yeah. Uh, and the infrastructure is, uh, all of the investment has already been made. And it was made by the taxpayers. Right by uh our society and um 
the idea that they are revert resorting to this and understand this is um this is just a wealth transfer from women like that uh, older woman who has to pee in her backyard to wealthy people who are not wanting to pay more in taxes that's what's happening there the 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 municipalities sell these water systems so that they don't have to raise taxes on people and the people that they would raise taxes on are obviously the wealthier people because they are getting more out of and they are profiting more off of the infrastructure that exists in that town off of the policing off of the fire department whatever they're literally profiting more that's why they have more money and um and if you want to tell me that's because that they deserve it, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you're 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 deluded. Um, they get to keep uh, uh, some of it, but the bottom line is, you, you, there should not be this type of disparity because of luck. I don't know what decision that old woman made that is forcing her, uh, that you think that she made to force her to pee outside because she can't afford water in her town um but i think most uh people would not want a society that um that someone gets punished for some decision that they supposedly made that ends up leading them uh to being that uh, that strapped yeah and so the bottom line is when a municipality sells off its water uh supply it is doing so to um <clears throat> protect them from the political implications of taxing the wealthy in that community. And then that cost is borne by uh, low-income people who have to pay a higher percentage of what they have to basic necessities. And this lawmaker close to understanding what the problem is, but not quite uh, there to understand exactly what you got to do about it. Yeah, you know what the problem is? You're playing the game called capitalism. Yep. And, and, you know, to be clear, uh, a state government, a municipal government, they don't have the ability to uh, print money like the U.S. government does. Right. So they are constrained uh, by their budgets in a way that the U.S. government is not. And there's two ways to address that. You raise taxes. And you also uh, elect people who are going to go to the federal government where they can expend this and have them uh, subsidize water, you know, basic necessities really should be water, electricity, power, food, housing. We should not have to have these things um, as commodities that people can jack up the prices on. So that they can, uh, you know, basically have this wealth transfer from the public into private hands. Yeah, um, I believe episode eight of TMBS, we had Matt Chrisman on to talk about sewer socialism in the uh, upper Midwest. And yeah, like, the, you know, the stuff is eternal. You're always going to need pipes and plumbing and stuff. Somebody like that. wrote a piece on that that we had on uh, the majority report, too. Yeah, that's right. I can't remember who that was. But yeah, I mean, this is, you know, um, very tried and, you know, common uh, battleground for this sort of thing. And it can't be left to capitalists in the yeah. area because they'll just, you know, you have you over a barrel, almost literally. Um, Alpha Incipient says the YouTube channel Climate Town recently did a fantastic deep dive on Chicago parking privatization. Just a horrible decision all around. And the other one I think about, Sam, is all, you always, the one you always talk about with Brownback. Like the well, and, that was just him cutting it, taxes, right? And all the and that was a you know that was just the, the trickle laughter. down doesn't work. Yeah. That wasn't uh, as much about privatization as it was about a tax right, scheme right, and right. this theory that. Um, Art Laffer had uh, promulgated and has driven the Republican Party ever since that the more you cut taxes, the higher revenues go because there's going to be more people are going to be incentivized to make more money because now they don't have to give any to the government. And of course, it's I mean, no pun intended, but it's laughable. And Kansas showed uh, that.